Welcome to the Choose You Netcast. This is Jim Langlois with the word from Joshua 24, 15. Choose you this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's my prayer that this netcast will encourage and cheer you on as we join forces to draw the line in the sand, defending our faith and our households in the resurrection power of Jesus. Join me each weekday as we dig deeply into God's amazing word and bring up the rich treasures of his blessings. Are you ready? Choose you this day whom you will serve. But that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house. I said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house. Good morning, NetWorld, and thank you for tuning in. We're continuing with our series on the eight basic events of the end times. And yesterday, we've been talking about eternity, or us being eternal. For John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And as I've been saying, I believe there are eight basic events in the end times. Now, all eight of these events are biblical events, and they will take place, with the exception of the first one being salvation, and that's our choice. And some may not agree with the timing of the rapture, but most all theologians believe in a rapture at some time. But my view will be explained for a pre-tribulation rapture. But what if I'm wrong? Well, regardless of the timing of the rapture, whoever believes in him, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah, glory to God, amen. Do I sound excited? Well, I'm crazy for Jesus. Have I been born again? Am I saved? Am I going to heaven? Am I a supernatural, eternal being in the spirit? Well, check this out in Galatians chapter 4, verse 31, in the Amplified Version. It says, so brethren, we who are born again are not children of a slave woman, being the natural, but of the free, the supernatural. I'm supernatural. How about you? Well, am I afraid of the end times? Am I worried about doomsday? Am I concerned about the end of the world? Are you kidding? I have a lot to look forward to. What a day to be alive. Yay! (laughs) Is this not why Jesus saved me? Was this not his mission? Luke 10, 19 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So he came looking, and he found me. I accepted him, and he saved me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Worried? Nope, not me. Why? Because I believe in eternity. Now let me review the eight basic events in my view. First being salvation. Second, the rapture. Third, the tribulation. Fourth, the second coming of Christ and the battle of Armageddon. Fifth, the millennium. Sixth, Satan is released and then cast into the lake of fire forever. Seventh, the great white throne judgment. And finally, eighth, eternity. Now, I want to repeat again that all of this material will be available for free on a PDF if you write to me. I have about 17 blogs that I taught on the end times, and all of those blogs are included in this teaching and all of the quotes that I pulled a lot of information from. So I'd like to give this to you for free. If you write to me at Pastor Jim at tmhnow.org, that's P-A-S-T-O-R-J-I-M, at T-M-H, which stands for The Master's House, now, N-O-W, tmhnow.org, and request my eight basic events of the end times document, I'll be glad to send it to you. Remember, Revelation 22.5 says, in the Amplified Version, And there shall be no more night. They have no need for lamplight or sunlight, for the Lord God will illuminate them, and be their light, and they shall reign as kings forever and ever, and here's the ending, through the eternities of the eternities. That's amazing, isn't it? Let's start talking about event number one. Now that we understand the basics of eternity, let's begin our journey through Bible prophecy concerning the end times and the basic events. Let's start with event number one. The first event is salvation, in my view. Even though salvation is not technically an end-time event, it has a major impact on how the end times and eternity will affect us. Even though people get saved at different times in their life, there is a specific biblical day that it should take place. 
The Bible tells everyone very clearly what that day should be. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Well, faith is also on the same day, for Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now is a very important time. Now is a very important day. Why is now so important? Well, James tells us in chapter 4, verses 13 through 14, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You see, the reason now is so important is because tomorrow may never happen. Dying is not one of the end times events, but it is something that will happen to everyone. Well, everyone except the Christians who are actually living on the day of the rapture. Those people will just be instantly transformed. I would like that, but I can't count on it. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. Do you know if you're going to die or if you're going to be raptured? Well, I don't. Do you know what day the rapture will be? How about the second coming of Christ? Well, I'm glad you didn't answer that because there are those who think they do. If anyone gives you a specific date, you can be sure that's not it. Because Jesus said in Matthew 24, 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So we're back to now. It's the only time we can count on. The problem with now is that it could end in less than a minute. Most of the people I know who have died were not expecting it. It's the same with the end times. Matthew 24, 44 says, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So in my view, that's when you least expect it. Hello, that means when you least expect it, when you're really not expecting it, when it would be a complete surprise, when in your mind it would never happen, when you're positive it isn't going to happen. It's when you are sure there's no way, it's not possible, it's not coming, it's impossible. No, not today, it will definitely not happen today. Well, and then all of a sudden, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, something happens. This is why we're instructed to be ready. This is why now is the day of salvation, because event number two is the rapture. Salvation is the only thing we can count on being now. Okay, well, how do I do that? I'm so glad you asked. You must believe in your heart and call on him with your mouth. For Romans 10, 9 through 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then Romans ten thirteen: for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So here's what I call my gospel math. It's believe in your heart plus confess with your mouth equals salvation or being saved. Let me say that again. My gospel math is believe in your heart plus confess with your mouth equals saved. So do you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead? Well, then call on him now. Don't wait. Don't wait a second. Do it now. Repent of your sins and call upon Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. When? Well, right now. Say this after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. You were born of the Virgin Mary. You grew up, healed the sick, set the captives free, and made the blind to see. They killed you on the cross. You died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. Then you went to hell. And God rose you from the dead. And now you are seated at the right hand of God in heaven. Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of all my sin. 
I ask you to forgive me. And now I confess that you are the Lord of my life. And I am saved according to scripture. Thank you for saving me in Jesus name. Amen. Well, now that's really great news. According to scripture, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when someone asks you, how do you know you're saved? You just say, well, Romans 10, 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's event number one. Well, that means you're you're ready for event number two. And it's called the rapture. It's in the twinkling or in the twinkling of an eye. First Corinthians fifteen fifty one through 52 says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. What is a twinkling? Well, in verse 52, we see it's a moment. Well, what is a moment? The Spirit-Filled Life Study Bible has a great comment on this, this word moment. It's originally the Greek word atomos, A-T-O-M-O-S, and it means to compare, an atomizer or Atomic, it means uncut, indivisible, undissected, infinitely small. The word is a compound of a un and temnos, which means to cut in two. When used of time, it represents an extremely short unit of time, a flash, an instant, a unit of time that cannot be divided. A second can be calibrated to one-tenth, to one-hundredth, and one-thousandth of a second. But how do you calibrate an atomic second? Well, Christ's return will be in a atomic second. The King James Version Bible Commentary says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, expresses a suddenness with which it will occur. The time is indicated at the last trump. This is not the last trump of Revelation 11.15, but the last trump of 1 Thessalonians 4.16. It is so designated because it signals the end of the present age. Two groups are distinguished. The dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The term dead refers to those who have died in Christ. The term we refers to those who are still living at the time of the rapture. That's great information. Probably the best way to describe a twinkling would be in the blink of an eye. Actually, the rapture happens so quickly, if you blink your eye, you'll miss seeing it. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-52 says in the message version, But let me tell you something wonderful, a mystery I'll probably never fully understand. We're not all going to die, but we're all going to be changed. You hear a blast to end all blasts from a trumpet, and in the time that you look up and blink your eyes, it's over. Oh my, it must have been an atomic moment, because our time is up. See you tomorrow. Be blessed. You have been listening to the Choose You Netcast with Jim Langlois. If you have enjoyed this program, you can find out more about Jim Langlois Ministries on the Master's House website at tmhnow.org. That's tmhnow.org. On the media tab, you can listen to many more messages, subscribe to my daily devotional emails, and follow the link to my blog site. If you'd like to write me or become a financial partner with this ministry, my address is the Master's House, Post Office Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. That's the Master's House, Post Office Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. Online donations can also be made at tmhnow.org, and my email address is pastorjim at tmhnow.org. This is Jim Langlois saying be blessed, you and your whole household. Until next time. Choose you this day, but well, that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house.